Welcome to the digital marketplace. We're going to just show you a little bit of a walkthrough of how the site works and what generally you are going to be building. Now, the first thing you might note is like, hey, it's not designed very well, or at least it doesn't look like it's designed very well. The the styles of it, it doesn't look like that engaging of a product. Now, if you went to TryJinga 1.8, the MVP landing page project, you would actually learn how to build a project using Bootstrap. And that's actually something you absolutely could do with this project, assuming that you got TryJinga 1.8 done. But the reason it looks so basic is not because the functionality is actually basic. It's much more because we wanted to focus on the backend functionality and how the site worked versus how it looked. Um, so in this case, it doesn't look the greatest, but it does function very, very well. Um, one thing off the bat is if we refresh it a few times here, we see that the products change. So these suggested products are based off of analytics and those analytics are like tags. So product sort of tags that the end user is going through. So if I click on a particular product, it, it, it starts to register that product even more. So I refresh in here, it's gonna give me various products and kind of in a random order um, on how it is that we actually see that. We also see top tags and then a curated playlist down here. So this is the admin user, the site owner curating a playlist or um, a list of products that we actually wanna see. Um, so let's actually jump into a product now what we see here is three images. Now all three of these images are auto-generated from a high resolution version of this main image. Now of course that is a car of a Tesla, but this is the image itself. It's not even fitting on the screen. I have to lower it, uh, but it's a fairly high resolution image. The actual size of the image doesn't really matter when it comes to these. They are all gonna be the same size um, relative to the size of the image, right? As we see on this one as well. Um, another thing to note is we have this rating history here, so I can actually click and make a rating. And if I refresh in here, it'll actually show me the average of all the ratings. So we use Django to get the average of all of our users that have made a rating here and then give that rating. And we also show the number of purchases for this particular product. We also have a way to go to the actual vendor who's selling this product. So in this case, it's JMitch. Notice it does look a lot like the homepage and that's done on purpose. A lot of these things we don't wanna repeat ourselves, so we kind of built this site to be a little bit smarter than things that you may have seen in the past. Now, something you should note is there is a search, and if I do this search function, it actually does a very basic search function, um, and it's a Git request, if you're familiar with how that is, um, and it's just very, very simple to actually do some searches, um, whether it's on the actual vendor page itself or in all the products too. So, and then, and this search is a little bit more dynamic than just the name of the title of the item. It actually shows a few other things that is coming through in here. And then we also have a library here that's actually showing the library of the products that I, as the user, actually own. This is not the same thing as the seller side of things. It's just these are the products that I've purchased and they're in my library. And again, you can search them as well. And it does the same sort of thing. So if you had a lot of products in here, you would this search function would be very useful for you. Now the main part of this is, well, being a seller. So as a seller, we go into the seller account here and we can actually see the different products and our sales history. So today's sales, um, transaction history sales, this is showing everything from within the last 24 hours and also it's showing our total transaction sales in life. And if we can see all the transactions that have ever been made, and that's that right there. We could we even show what user has made those transactions. Now in this case, I am the user that both is the seller as well as the user that purchased it. But if you went through it with a different user, that absolutely would show that user accordingly. And then we can go into our products and we can see the actual display of the product or we can view all of them and make some edits to them, right? So if we came in here and decided to call this something different than product three, we could call it new product here and just change the description we can update it and we save it and now it's known as new product. Now, if I was the, if I owned this product and I went into library, I would see that new product and, and then that's it, this right here. So new product here is actually something I technically own as the user. So let's do that in real time now. So product three here, I'm gonna actually go ahead and edit product three, it's owned by that user. So back in here, I see product three, that's this one right here without an image. I'm gonna go ahead and edit that. I'm just opening it up into a new one and I'm gonna call this walkthrough 
and I'm not going to change the description. I'm going to grab the media file here. I'm going to go in the desktop and notice this is a high resolution image. I'm going to go ahead and open that and I'm going to hit update product. Notice that these images are smaller. If we go into inspect this element, actually let's copy the image address and we paste that in. This is actually a smaller image. All right, so now we've got that going. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and purchase this image. So I hit purchase, I go ahead and confirm it. Notice all that stuff was done without reloading the page. That's something called Ajax, which we'll get into of course. And now I can actually preview this document. Now notice that the preview is much bigger than the actual small image itself, right? And this is just showing the actual image as far as being able to download the high res version. Now you might be like, well, what if I just copy this URL and you know wasn't logged in? So I opened up an incognito window. The incognito window does it ends your session. So it's like saying, hey, this user is no longer logged in. And it, and you can do this with what it's called private browsing. Essentially, you could do it in Safari or Firefox. But um, basically, we're gonna pretend like we're not a logged in user anymore. And I'm gonna paste that URL in press enter and I get this page not found error. And that's exactly what we should see when it comes to trying to download this when you're not actually the end user downloading it. But that's a little different than if we go into the thumbnail and copy that link and paste this one in here. This one we should actually be able to see and we do. So that adds to the usability of the site quite a bit. Um, so then as a, a, an unlogged in user, we see that all of this stuff is here. Um, all right, cool. So that's a few things there as far as the seller is concerned. And of course we can delete the products and we can do all sorts of things with this digital marketplace. Now again, it looks like it's fairly simple and it is, it is actually a fairly simple site, but it will work very well for you. And then if you couple it with using bootstrap from the front end framework of what you've learned in TriJingo 1.8, you can actually make this look like pretty solid as far as the site's concerned and get it ready to actually launch, which is again, another thing that you learn in TriJingo 1.8. Um, so that is a free project, it's on YouTube. So youtube.com slash user slash coding entrepreneurs. You can use those two together and really make a cool online marketplace um, and also be able to launch it and have users start using it right away. Now, one last thing that I do want to mention is that all this code is open source and that is all open source on our GitHub site. So that's github.com slash coding for entrepreneurs slash digital dash marketplace. Now, all of these URLs are a lot easier to remember if you just do join CFE slash GitHub and then join CFE slash YouTube. Those will take you to our two channels um, for GitHub and YouTube and it will allow you to just scroll down here and show you exactly what that is. Um, all right, so if you guys have any questions on this walkthrough, let us know. There is so much that goes behind this page. I know it looks very simple, but there really is a lot. And something else that we do talk about is the Django admin. And that the Django admin is really where you as the admin user is gonna like control all of this site. And you can see how it works with the database and um, how you can actually adjust products if your sellers aren't doing what you want them to do. You can also approve a, a seller account or you can delete it um, depending on what it is that you want from your site and how you want it to work. Again, if you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, um, let's get started with the project.